participate in this so-called heathen festival called Christmas that has nothing whatsoever to do with the Christian faith. Give me Deuteronomy 18, chapter. I think I want Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When thou art coming to the land which the Now Lord here's an instruction God gave the prophet to tell the people. Now I'm going to give you this land for inheritance. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very, very careful that you don't get caught up in the vices and the sins of those nations that I'm going to give you of their land. I read. When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Don't learn to do after the sins of those nations. Mm. Now again, this so-called Christmas came from the worship of Tammuz, the sun god. And it was engrafted into the Hebrew people when they were in bondage. But when God delivered them, they still kept some of those traditions with them and wanted to go back. They couldn't do it in Judah. But they wanted to go back into Egypt and participate in the festival. And then after the festival was over, go back to Judah. And God, through the prophet, had warned them, said, now if you go back, only the ones who are going to escape. In other words, the ones who have given up this type of uh, worship, this type of uh, identification with the sun worship of the sun God. And when you uh, uh, separate yourself from that, then you can be delivered. But if you're going to still keep going back and then come back to Judah and keep going back to Egypt, no, God would not accept you. He would you be evil and not for good. Now, uh, we have to understand fully that no matter how innocent it may seem to be, and everybody wants uh, uh, their relatives by by gifts for their children. It, it, it's, it's, it has something to do with the natural uh, crave uh, that uh, humanity has developed. But brothers and sisters, when you serve God, hear me close, there always must be a sacrifice. And that sacrifice comes from a disciplined life that is instructed by the Bible. You cannot worship God and still take part in the sins of Satan. You have to make your mind up Yes, and draw a line and not cross over that line. You may say, well, give me Jeremiah 10th chapter. Yeah. You may say that this is so innocent. It has, what does gifts have to do with me worshiping Tammuz? Because the gifts is a part of the structure of that worship. Now, now watch close here. Give me Jeremiah 10th chapter and jump right into verse 2. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Thus said God, learn not the way of the heathens. In other words, don't participate in heathen customs. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Yes. For, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are vain. Watch this now. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. They cut a tree down out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Uh -huh. They deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate this tree with silver and gold. Oh, yeah. The trinkets that you see on the so-called Christmas tree today represents symbolically the silver and gold. Uh -huh. So this beautifies this particular tree. Now you have pastors in the Christian church that will have a Christmas tree not only in their home, but they'll have a Christmas tree in their church. I've seen this with my own eyes. I've seen Pentecostal pastors have a tree in their church. One of them had a tree, but he wouldn't decorate it. Okay. But what you got the tree for? <laughs> uh, so he just by not decorating the tree, but still having the tree. But uh, after January the 1st or the 2nd or the 3rd, what happens to that tree? It's gone. Why don't you have that tree in July? Why don't you have that tree in September? No, you're going to wait till December to have that tree and say that you are not participating in the heathen festival. Well, show me by scripture where you're supposed to have this tree, and I'm going to show you by scripture where you're not supposed to have this tree. Jeremiah again, 10th chapter, from verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Now the heathens are dismayed by an instruction that comes from heaven against this type of custom. Verse 4. They decorate it with silver and with gold. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that uh -huh. it move not. They put it on a stand so it won't fall down. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but right after the holiday so-called season, they take that tree and they discard it. Now, is this idol worship? Yes. You may say, 
Well, no, it's not I worship. Well, tell me, why would you take a tree that ain't bothering nobody, cut it down, bring it into your living room, and then beautify it and tell me you're not worshiping the tree. Hallelujah. Why are you decorating it? Why are you making the tree look so pretty? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> because you are in identification with idol worship. Yeah. I don't care how innocent you try to make it to be. Brothers and sisters, anytime you take part in a heathen festival, Colossians 2 and 8, a heathen festival that God has spoken out against, that makes you an adversary to God. Yes, yeah. That makes you an unsaved person. And not only unsaved, but you're going a little bit farther. Now you're beginning to defy God. Yeah. You know, it's one thing uh, not to know and do wrong, mm -hmm. but it's something when God tells you not to do it, and you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. It's like a, a, a child, a parent tells the child, now don't you do that no more. Mm -hmm. And a child, you're breaking the parents' faces and do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now your parent got to do something. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't keep having this happen. I'll tell you, don't bring the Kool-Aid in the living room and you're going to spill it every time. Amen. Now the parent got to take a stand. Now when the child grabbed the Kool-Aid and come in the living room again, what well, they got time to have, 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 have the belt now for the world. Amen. Since the world ain't doing no good, now the punishment got to take part. The physical or the corporal punishment got to take part. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, anytime you defy the word of God, there is a judgment reward coming to those who defy God. And you cannot hide behind the sweet spirit because it's a false spirit. Yes. And any time a spirit comes that's not of God, it's a false spirit. That's right. I don't care how jingle bells ring and whole holy night and all that. <laughs> you can get all that mess right back to the devil. Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's not of God. Amen. It's of a heathen festival yeah. that the devil is blinding the mind of people. Where I say, go. Colossians 2 and 8. Read. Beware that any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Now, beware is a warning. That any man spoil you through philosophy, which means a type of instruction. Uh -huh. And vain deceit. Yes. After, tr after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Christmas is by man's invention and not God's invention. That's why you won't find Christmas That's in the right Bible. Prophet preach. It's man's invention. And Paul gives a warning. New Testament now. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and being deceit after the rudiments of the world or the traditional custom of the world and not after God. In other words, if God haven't uh, brought it forth, how are you going to bring it forth? If God has told you not to do this, how are you going to still do it? So we have to understand the importance of obeying the instructions of God. This is a tradition of men and not a tradition of Jesus. So in other words, we have to make a, a conscious choice here. Now, for some of you, this is going to be difficult mm -hmm. because you still ain't going to accept what I'm saying. I teach prophet. When your relatives call you up and say, Merry Christmas, Right. You say, Happy Tammuz. <laughs> you don't say what you're talking about. Okay. And you say what you're talking about. <laughs> you know I don't celebrate Christmas. Why you call me up on this summer? You didn't call me up last week. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh. Great prophet. <laughs> we are a royal priesthood, a yeah. holy nation. Yeah. Yeah. Called for God's own divine purpose. Yeah. And we're not going to let you say Merry Christmas and we're going to just, uh, just go along with the program. Well, I don't want to offend nobody. Sometimes you got to offend. If you represent God. And sometimes you got to beforehand, you know something. Now, I don't mean no harm, but don't be sending my children no Christmas gifts because we don't believe in that. Now, let's get, we got, we just identified with the tree. Now, let me show you something. When they brought the tree in to the courtyard, of the individual villages. Mm -hmm. They decorated the tree and then they placed under the tree fruit cakes. Yes. Cakes that were made with molasses, honey, nuts, uh, raisins and figs and Dates. the fruit of that particular era. Yeah. And on the high point, December 25th, they would exchange these cakes one with another. This is where your Christmas gift comes from. And again, you can't find no gifts recorded for somebody's birthday except when they brought gifts to Jesus and that was to prove one point.